Um, uh, thank you very much, Salim, for the introduction. And um, um, I want to thank the organizers of this conference for inviting me to give this presentation. Uh, my talk is going to be about uh, what we have learned from HIV AIDS in Uganda and how we can use the, uh, what we have learned from HIV AIDS to address other uh, healthcare uh, uh, challenges. So this is going to be the outline of my talk. I'm going to talk about the current disease but in Uganda. And I'm going to give the specific uh, um, uh, country lessons that we've learned from HIV and how we can use these to address other uh, chronic uh, diseases. Now, the, the top causes of uh, mortality in Uganda still remain the infectious diseases. And as you can see, majority of them are still driven by HIV or things like TB and pneumonia. Uh, however, we have other upcoming uh, non-communicable diseases uh, that contribute significantly to mortality in Uganda. Now, HIV and AIDS uh, has been around uh, for over three decades in Uganda. We still have so many people with HIV AIDS, 1.6 million people. Uh, however, HIV was the first chronic care, uh, first chronic illness to receive significant resources and has therefore established a treatment system and program. We have so many well-studied innovations and we can use these innovations to address other uh, emerging illnesses. Uh, this slide shows uh, the, digitalized, the digitalized, uh care system in Uganda, and this is similar to what we see in uh, most of the uh, African countries. And as you can see, we have smaller health center uh, facilities, the health center twos and health center threes, that provide the bulk of the care. And then we have the higher health care facilities, the district hospitals and regional referral hospitals that provide tertiary uh, care. And the, the smaller health care facilities are generally run by registered nurses and paramedicals. And uh, these are the ones that provide the bulk of the health care delivery um, to majority of the, of the population. And then the specialized care facilities are run by specialists and medical officers, and they're the ones that provide uh, specialized uh, health care uh, facilities. Now, although the chronic care model has been described for so many years, in 2010, uh, the Minister of Health, uh, working with some uh, USAID program, the uh, University Research Council, decided to implement the chronic care model to address uh, both HIV and other chronic care diseases, specifically hypertension and diabetes. And what they decided was to set up a pilot program uh, in one of the districts in, in central Uganda to see whether the chronic care disease model could improve both the care for HIV, but also improve care for hypertension and diabetes. And uh, what, was, uh, what was done is that um, the imp the, a set of innovations and uh, system changes were addressed to, were put in place to address all the elements of the chronic care disease model, ranging from the patient-centered uh, uh, support systems to decision support, community resource mobilization, and clinical information systems. And what was seen over time is that um, improvement and uh, use of chronic care model does not only improve HIV uh, care in terms of uh, ART coverage, retention, and awareness, but also improved NDC, NCD care. Uh, what is important to note is that in using the chronic care disease model, all adults were screened for hypertension and diabetes, and this led to a 10 to 8, uh, uh, eight a 10 and 8, uh, 10 times um, increase in the numbers of hypertension and diabetes patients with a fair treatment outcomes of 49, almost half of the patients were BP and, uh, and uh, blood sugar uh, controlled. And this shows that using the chronic disease model, we can be able to use uh, this kind of system to address other uh, chronic care diseases. Now, one of the things that has been documented so many, for so many years in HIV is that Uganda, like most of the sub-Saharan countries, we still rely on a lower, a lower cadres to provide HIV care. We know that majority of the HIV programs use uh, nurses and other paramedical professionals to provide HIV care. And this is just because we have a shortage of healthcare professionals to deliver the care, and we have a high, hu uh, a huge uh, demand for, for healthcare services. We know that task shifting has been accepted both by the uh, policy makers and governments, and uh, we have uh, used these lessons to change how we deliver care for other chronic care, other chronic illnesses. To give specific examples, when you look at psychiatric uh, illnesses, uh, Dr. Uh, Diane talked about uh, depression being significant cause of morbidity in our country. 
but the country and the Ministry of Health has de uh, designed a system of using psychiatric clinic officers who are more clinically oriented uh, junior uh, psychiatric junior uh, uh, healthcare professionals provide mental health at a community level. We have done the same for uh, uh, common eye diseases. For example, cataract, cataract extraction can now be done by uh, non-specialist ophthalmic officers. The same thing, uh, anesthetic care is now provided by registered care nurses who receive a short uh, duration in, uh, in provision of anesthetic uh, services. Now, the other problem that Uganda uh, faces, just like many of the countries, is that uh, is access to critical care. And in this study done by colleagues in southwestern Uganda using a rural health care fa uh, facility, they were able to show that you can use registered care nurses, registered nurses who receive a short time training in critical care to provide uh, critical care services for patients who are presenting to accident and emergency. Specifically, these are patients who have injuries. Uganda has a huge uh, problem of uh, road traffic accidents. And uh, these uh, registered nurses can provide care for both uh, patients, uh, patients who present with uh, critical, care, uh, um, uh, critical care questions. The other uh, question in a critical care model is whether you can use the HIV, the present HIV infrastructure to address other uh, communicable uh, care diseases, the non-communicable diseases. Uh, and in work that was done by such and uh, such collaboration, you can clearly see that um, using a multi-disease uh, community campaigns, you can be able to detect hypertension and uh, diabetes patients and uh, link them to care. And uh, we, we saw that this was very feasible. It was very easy to integrate hypertension and diabetes screening into HIV testing platforms. Uh, this specific example um, uh, is uh, showing us how we can use the current laboratory infrastructure to address uh, the ever-present uh, uh, threat of, uh, of communicable diseases, for example, Ebola and other viral hemorrhagic fever. Now, Uganda needs, um, um, Uganda needs um, uh, rapid uh, diagnostic and molecular tests to address uh, 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 diseases like viral hemorrhagic fever. But most of our country laboratory systems that provide such uh, molecular diagnostics are centrally located. And to do that, therefore, you have to think of how do you transport uh, specimens, for example, histological specimens for cancer diagnosis and uh, uh, serum samples for disease surveillance and uh, investigations of the epidemics to the countries. And what the Uganda has used using the early infant diagnosis model was to set up a kind of laboratory referral system that, that not only addresses the HIV samples, but also addresses things like TB, uh, cancer, and uh, other uh, uh, viral hemorrhagic fevers investigations. And you can clearly see that using this model, uh, the turnaround time was able to be reduced from about uh, 50 days to about 14 days with significant uh, reduction in costs. So in summary, I wanted to say that we have learned a lot in terms of chronic care model. We're now using the chronic care model that we have used uh, for some time in HIV to address other chronic care diseases. We know that task, sh uh, task shifting has been a success in HIV and are making a point that we can use task, uh, task shifting to address mental and aesthetic and other uh, health care needs. But we know that to do that, we need policy guidelines, we need to put up regulatory frameworks, and we know that what made it uh, possible to do in HIV is because we had simple evidence-based protocols, and, um, and I think we still need uh, these uh, simple and evidence-based protocols to address. I want to thank my mentors who have made, uh, uh, who have given me um, uh, support to do my career development. I want to thank the colleagues at the Minister of Health who contributed towards this uh, presentation. I want to thank the colleagues I work with, with the, on the search consortium.